Okay. Doop. Okay. Kanyini, in each other we find ourselves. There is a spiritual purpose that only you can fulfill. As you move forward on your journey, you create space for others to move along beside you. And as the ones ahead of you move forward, so, to, so too does room open up for your expansion. Upon this earth, we are all building the sacred temple, each fulfilling our tasks as we assist and support each other in our collective divine mission. How can you help with your heart most actively engaged? What can you offer which inspires and energizes you so much that others are uplifted in your presence? How can you receive from others joyfully, bringing them pleasure? Engage in giving and receiving deeply and with devotion. Your wisdom and openness to life generates healing for our earth. So find your feet as if they went missing overnight. And then there's a seam right in the middle of the body. So in between the ankles, the knees, the thighs, right up through the center of the pelvis, through the belly button, through the sternal space, right between the collarbones, through the center of the chin, up to the third eye, all the way to the crown of the head. Bring your mind into the seam of that body, just right in there. And start to breathe inward, pulling your extremities in, diving in all the way from ankles up to the crown of the head, as if you were just trying to fold yourself in on, side, on, on top of itself. And as you fold in, Notice whether you've been wanting to spend more time alone. Maybe there was a, a, like a cosmic cry from humanity that said, we need a little more alone time. We need to shelter with our families for a little while. Somehow we needed this silence. And then as the body folds inside of itself over and over and over, begin to lengthen the breath. Because to fold in consciously is one thing. To fold in because you feel like you're, you're you know, falling into a hole is another. I'm falling and I can't, I can't stop the falling. Folding in consciously. Breathing all the way down to the tip of the tailbone. And then back out the mouth. And then consciously begin to unfold from the very center of you, from between the ankles, the calves, the knees, the thighs, the belly button, the heart space, the throat, the third eye, the crown. Let everything slide out until it almost feels like your energy is going to fly away. And right at that tipping point, hold on and breathe. Because to expand beyond is beautiful and then pull back in so you can hold. Because do we expand and push others away? Or do we expand and make space? It's not the concept of lead, follow, or get out of the way. That was my motto for probably 30 years. 
and then I stopped. Shift into your right foot. Take your center with you. Take your expansion with you. And then shift left. Shift and shift and shift until the pad of that right foot wants to pull up, but not quite. Back to the right. And then back to the left. Back through center, lean back toward the heels till the toes peel up, but don't leave them behind necessarily. They're still part of who you are. Then lean forward until the heels want to pull off the floor. Your toes have to dig in and hold. If you've got neuropathy in the toes, don't lean so far forward. Leaning back. Breathe it in. And then lean it forward. Come back through center and then right, forward, left, and back. So you're just like the leaning Tower of Pisa as if somebody stuck a rod down its middle and then started to turn a crank. Wouldn't that be cool if you showed up at the leaning Tower of Pisa and every day it was leaning in a different direction? <laughs> but you're just your, your center is still there. You're just pivoting around it. Center doesn't go away. Wherever you end up, go the other way. So these are little tiny fine stabilization muscles. You're going to notice which foot is stronger, which hip wants to hold, and which one doesn't. One more full circle around. And then as you take a full breath in, let that filling pull you back into center. Hands settle somewhere on the belly or the heart. Some might want to cross the arms and hold on to the shoulders, feeling the weight of the hands. Big breath in, on the side out. Hold your core nice and steady. Turn your toes out. Bring your heels together and bring a, a cosmic sheet of paper in between the inner thighs or the calves or the knees. For those of you with beautiful negative space between your legs, pretend you're holding a golf ball. And then take your center about an inch or two off the ground by rolling up, squeeze through the center of the body though. Keep those inner thighs, those glutes glued together. Release the jaw, drop the tongue. Continue to breathe fully. And then on the next breath, the heels come down and kiss again. And then shift right. These seem so ridiculous. We just hold. Don't lose center. Lift through center. Because if you notice, off to the left, those times in your life where you've left center, where you've like really just like fallen off, did you notice that those that you love fell away from you as well? It's hard for them to hang on when you're pulling away so much. Come back through center. Heels come out, feet are a little wider than hips. Hands slide to thighs, nice flat back. Little bend in the knees, tailbone scoops up toward the sky. Left hand stays where it is, right hand juts out. Breathe it in, breathe it out. Thumbs turn up, hand slides forward. Left hand comes out to join right. Hold it in the thighs, find it in the glutes, pull everything toward the center line of the body. Breathe in, breathe out, right hand lands. Left hand comes out, thumb side up. Now release so that you can expand. Not so much effort here. 
palm turns down, shoulder blades are kissing in the back. Breathe it in, breathe it out, hand come to thighs. Right foot steps back, left hand, right hand on left thigh. Nice long lunge, arms sweep up. Warrior one, if you only stepped back this far, it's a short stance, gorgeous. Concentrate on that core. We're going further into the core once we hit the floor. And that heel can stay up. Shoulders and hip points are in the same plane. Breathing in, breathing out. Right hand lands on the back of the thigh. Reach up and back, open that abdominal space. Big breath here. Left hand comes down to the thigh. Right hand sweeps up and over and reaches way forward. So now we're really stretched out. Knee over ankle, heel pressing back for the nice calf stretch. Right hand lands on that left thigh. Left hand sweeps back, spinal twist. That's right. Where is the breath? Pull towards center. Both hands come down. Step those feet back together. Flatten that back. Straighten the legs. And then tip the upper body down. If you want to have a chair in front of you so you can put your hands in the chair, please, 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 please make all the modifications. Let the head hang as heavy as possible. If you're just gonna hold here, beautiful. The head can still hang. It's gonna elongate that cervical spine just a little. <sighs> and then back up the thighs we go, sliding up all the way up overhead. Reach, toes pointed forward, heels are gonna rise. So pull in toward the center line of the body. Inner thighs can be I mean, you can watch my legs er, as they pull in and then the heels lift. I keep pulling and I keep pulling and I slide everything in towards center. Making room for those in front of me, those behind me, and those that want to walk beside me. The heels slide down, hands come back to the thighs, nice flat back. Little bend in the knees. Hands come into prayer at the heart as long as you're okay with letting go of your thighs. Shark fin shoots out in front. Heels roll up if you want to, but if not, don't worry about it. There's no judgment here. Breathe it in, breathe it out. Hands to the thighs, heels down, left leg steps back. Find comfort, then explode away from center, but don't fly away too much. I have a tendency to fly completely away until I leave my body, like it's just a shell. Inner thighs pull together like you're riding a fence rail, knee over ankle. Gorgeous. Left hand lands on that back thigh or right at the top of the hip. And then you ex just extend so that that belly can open up. <sighs> and then right hand slides down. Left hand sweeps up and over. The heel presses back. This is our calf stretch. Beautiful, once you feel like you've stretched the calf long enough, that left hand lands, that body twists, and we are Annie Oakley or, or Gene Autry or somebody on our horse, shooting over the backside of the, whatever we're shooting at back there with my cap gun. I wanted to be Annie Oakley so bad. Breathe it in, breathe it out, hands to thigh, step those feet together. Forward fold. <sighs> Anybody that needs to do a little handstand hop here, feel free. Plant the hands, kick those feet up. Ah. <sighs>
Nice. Knees, bend hands to thighs, collarbones rise. Hands into prayer, shoot the hands up and out, lift. Spread the hands wide, shift right, left knee up and out, cross the ankle behind. So here, we're gonna lift the back of the leg. Yeah, he's hunting bunnies. So lift the back of the leg away from the leg if you can. Breathe it in. Breathe it out. Cosmic little OMG. Put the toe down. Sweep those fingertips back. Cosmic curtsy. Inhale. Exhale. And then as we rise, that left leg is either going to come up into the hand and we hold here, toe on the ground if you want to. We lift, we reach for the toe if we want to, and Udita B is there in the hand. But if we're gonna just hold here, hold here. Breathing. If you're gonna do full Udita B, concentrate on the tip of the heel. Like you have a pencil coming out. Woo, I went into that too fast. Breathe it in. Breathe it out, feet step side by side, hands come into the middle. <sighs> oh, so fun. <laughs> Excellent, breathe it in. And out. Beautiful, hands down. Nice and wide, shift left, heel kicks behind, that's the right leg this time, then we turn it out. And then it's, it's fairly simple. You just lift the back of the leg, feeling like a little bit like a fountain in a park. You can make a little face. Don't fly away from center though. Breathe it in. Breathe it out, put that foot down, the fingers sweep back. That knee, in CrossFit, this is called a dragon walk, that knee can tuck into that calf. You could spread it all the way out, like the queen is coming if you want. Or you just hold here. Breathe in. Breathe out on the next breath in. You start to expand like a sprouting flower. Hold center. Hold center, hold center, hold center, hold center. Then decide how you want to explode away from center. So you've got your Udita B. You can see yourself in the screen so you know where your arms are. But if you're just here, beautiful. Ah, testing the balance, testing where center is. Because notice if your thoughts are pulling away, you're probably wobbling. Bring it in, bring it in, bring it in, and then pull it all back into center. Fold in to the center line first. Wrap in. And then roll back open. I'm still at my center, but I'm radiating from center and not necessarily from my thoughts or from my feelings or from my ego, just from center. Ah, <sighs> okay. So for those of you that wanna train dancer posture, you can find the back of a chair, you can find a wall, can find a great many things. So I'll do the chair version. Ori's really good at dancer, so she's going to do the, the regulation version. So I'm going to step behind her so she has room for her arms. And if you're going to pull up behind a chair or into a wall, pulling into a wall is a good thing too, or a countertop, set your feet side by side first. Wrap into center. Really pull in and breathe on that until you know you've touched the core of that soul space. The shoulders and everything might even round in on it. And then as you expand, roll back out from there. Shoulder blades come back and together. Shift into your left foot, put your right toes out back. All right, so if you need a strap around the foot, because you really want to hang on and you want to try to do the whole dancer thing, I'll, I'll do an example with that. If you've got a necktie or a belt, 
You can put that around the right ankle. For those of you that want to go ahead and grab that right ankle, go forth. So I've got a little strap, I pull it up and in, I square with the back of the chair, and then I use the weight of the leg to pull the sh shoulder back and in. Then if you want to extend forward, you extend forward. But if you don't want to, this is not necessary. I mean, this is free yoga. It's, it's not worth it if it's too much. Make sure there's a little sponge in that knee joint. If you like the Great British Bake Off, have a nice sponge. Breathe in, breathe out, tip, release, and find center again. Ah. Now we're gonna train this posture a little bit. So we're just gonna see what it's like the first time on each side. So if you've got that strap, it just goes around the ankle. If you don't have a strap and you just wanna point at the foot, point, it's okay to point in yoga. I'm okay with that. They might not let you point in preschool, but you can point in yoga. That left heel pulls up, and if that's enough to stand right there and have the weight of the leg pull the shoulder back, beautiful. Otherwise, go forth. Do your dancer. Press down through the standing leg. Lean. If you're going to shoot forward, shoot forward. If you're going to make a mudra with the hand, have the Atman bow down to the Brahman. Breathe it in. Breathe it out. Start to unwind, release, and hold. <sighs> now, if that posture was hard, it's supposed to be. It was meant to squeeze the nervous system, squeeze and tax the body. And it's, it's, the dancer posture is one of the, the, mo the, the quintessential struggle postures. Because you get into it, and then there's the push me, pull you, and eventually the brain gets in there, and it, boy, it's an ego buster. So let the struggle happen, but don't participate. Don't go to frustration town, because then we start beating up. So we're back into our left foot. If we've got our strap, we've got our strap. We want to stand up and away from the arch of the left foot. And then start to make micro adjustments. Pull the inner thighs together first. Press the center of the thoracic forward next. The right shoulder slides back. Now we're going to slide from center with that right knee. Sliding from center. If it rolls out to the outside, then I'm going to do like this. So I want to have everything pulled in. So once you feel like you're in that center, Slice from center, press from center. So don't, don't go away from the soul, expand from the soul. Beautiful. Breathe it, pull back into center as you release. Stand firm in your mountain. Feel the full weight of your body on the soles of your feet. But the weight of the, in the feet is just as important as the rise of the crown of the head. When you're ready, shift right. If you have a strap, adjust. Plant the right foot. Squeeze the inner thighs together. Everything comes from center. There's an expansion through the belly that happens. There's a rise of the sternum. And then everything in the back side of the body comes right in to this core space back here, right behind the seat of the soul. And when you want to expand, you expand. But we don't expand up and out, we don't fly away. We pull in, expand from center. And then you just hold. Wherever you are, you just hold. Struggle the struggle that is present 
And if a different struggle happens to pop in, make note of that. This can mimic emotional struggle. And when you've finished, you pull out, find your mountain, and be firm in who you are. Firm in our leadership. Firm in being helpers. Lead when we lead, help when we help. Breathe it in. Exhale it out. Those of you with the back of a chair or a wall available, we're going to move into that. Those of you that want to step to the front, go through a vinyasa, and end up in a downward facing dog, head there. You would reach up, slide down toward the thighs or the toes, step or jump back. Those with a chair are going to simply slide down into the chair. Those of you in your plank position, lower gingerly to the floor, upward dog, ending in downward dog. If none of that made any sense, don't worry about it. A year from now, it'll be like old hat. Otherwise, if you're leaning into the back of the chair or the seat of a chair, you can take your right foot, press it a little further back and get a nice hamstring stretch. So our modified downward facing dog, those of you in dog, pedal it out. Maybe lower the knees within an inch of the floor, you know, get, get all the movements. If you're in the back of a chair, step one foot forward and the other foot back. Get into hamstrings and calves. In your downward facing dog, pull toward the center line of the chest. Pull thumbs together, pull the inner arms further together, pull the ribs closer in together, all toward the center line of the body. Inner thighs, squeeze, ankles pulling together like two magnets. Breathe it in, breathe it out, knees drop, child pose or puppy, those on the back of the chair, step it together, one hand to one thigh, other hand to other thigh, and make your way down to the floor. We're all going to shift onto our hips. We're going to sit at first, <sighs> being pulled in and down. <sighs> Nicely done. Feel all the feels. Is the yoga pulling up frustration, which then makes me feel like I'm flying away? Cool. Notice that. Ah, oh, yoga mimics life. So if we've pulled up and away in frustration, breathe into that and notice that it's just yoga. Make note of where you flew away to and maybe why. And then wrap in on yourself. We're not imploding. We're not trying to destroy ourselves like a star. We're wrapping in to touch that is with, which is deepest. So that now when we roll back out, hands present out, sits bones press, crown of the head presses up, fingertips barely touching the floor, legs in whatever configuration they need to be in, that when we expand like this, we are still leaving room for others. Finding our best selves. Big breath in, big breath out. Lean into that right hand, left arm stretches up and over. Finding the length in the side of the body first because we're about to go into side body. Breath stretches all those ribs and those obliques. And then to the other side we go. Very methodical stretching here. Finding with purpose, making sure those hips are both firmly planted so that I'm not pulling still in from a tight center. 
and then lift up. Ah, any way you want to make your way to your belly, go forth. If you want to pull through and slither back, or go into a half plank and lower down. You just make your way in the best way possible. All right, once the belly is down, stack the hands, put the third eye right there on the back of the hands. I'm gonna lift my head away, otherwise you guys are gonna think I've fallen down the well, <laughs> speaking into the mic. Big toes draw together. So now I'm gonna stand up because then, I'm, if I've got my head on my hands, and my toes go out to the side. That's my hips wanting to pull me away. That's tight hip structure. So what I wanna do is I wanna pull in, the tops of my feet are on the floor, everything pulls into center line. And then I breathe around it. Notice where my shoulders are in relation to my ribs. Could I find a little more space in the belly so that there's more space between my ribs and my hips? Could I press my toes further away so there's more space in the belly between the crown of the head and the toes? And then the next breath just lets me go like a flat tire into the floor. Everything starts to roll away from center. And the next breath in pulls it back into center, decreasing the amount of space between the legs. Feeling the abdominal wall tighten. And then the next exhale releases all that. Just little micro movements. Breath in pulls into center. Abdominal wall flexes, ribs wrap in like a corset, inner thighs, calves pressing together. This time, lift the head away from the mat. Press the forearms down and in. Make sure the back is nice and safe first, then let the arms fly up away from the floor. If it is not safe for your arms to fly up away from the floor, keep the forearms there. Check in with your back. So we're lifting. Ah, tops of the feet are pressing down. Breathe it in. Breathe it out. Hands shoot out front. Put a cupcake under each hand. Fingertips press down. Inner thighs still pressing in. We're moving into the core line of the body. Breathe it in. Breathe it out, right hand slides out at 90 degrees. I put the palm down, put the left palm down. I'm gonna roll onto my left side. And now I'm a nice long reclining Buddha. I've got my kickstand out in front of my heart space. Head comes to rest on the upper arm, unless it would feel better to rest my head in my hand on the, with the left hand. And then that right leg floats up and away. And I take my peripheral vision and I look down there at that foot because I want the inside edge of my foot parallel to the floor. Outside edge parallel with the ceiling, unless you've got vaulted ceilings and then it just makes it very hard. <laughs> breathing in, breathing out, turn those toes up, lift a little higher if you can. The outside of that left thigh should be nice and firm. Breathing. <sighs> so either straight leg here or bent leg, I will bend my right leg. Or here, I'll straighten my right leg and Ori will bend her right leg. And then we're gonna drop it out in front of the belly button. Right hand is nice and firm on the floor and then it hovers. Yeah. <laughs> Breathing in. Breathing out, leg floats back up. Turn those feet so they're parallel to the floor. Bring the tailbone up and into the fold again. Drop that leg on top, take a breath. And then the belly rolls back to the floor. 
cupcake under each hand, Superman overhead, lift the head again, tops of the feet press down, find the rib points, find the hip points, pubic bone presses down and in, everything then pulls in towards center again. <sighs> so you can roll over on your back and do all this stuff if you need to. So sinuses, acid reflux, that kind of thing. If you're sitting up, you can always put your legs out in front of you and try to touch your toes. Pachimottanasana. Breathe it in. Breathe it out. That left hand sweeps out to the side. Palms flatten. We roll onto the right side. Feet flex. Head in hand. Head not in hand. And then we lift the outside of that left leg. And we just hold. And we hang out. And if you fold it over your legs because you're doing seated postures, you can roll back up and then put your legs out in a V and then fold over the right leg. And when you've had enough of that, fold over the left. Toes turn up toward the ceiling, leg rises. <sighs> Firmly plant the palm of that left hand. Let that leg drop bent or straight and it hovers over the floor. Everything in the core has to grab on. Breath might be a little tough. <sighs> Leg rises. Breathe it in. Extend it down. Rotate that leg. Hold. And then put the legs back together. Slide out to the belly. Hands shoot up overhead. Cupcake under each hand. Let one elbow come up under the shoulder for half sphinx. Then the other elbow pulls in. And then use the press down of the forearms and the hands to pull the heart space through. Now we've flown away from the center line of the body. So now we're going to pull everything back and in. And if you're doing forward folds here, you would simply put the ankles side by side, reach the hands up overhead, and go into a staff posture, into Dandasana, making your body into an L. Breathe it in. Breathe it out. And then roll the body down, stack the hands, place the forehead. <sighs> If you wanted to roll onto your back and hug your knees into your chest, you could do that too and do a little spinal rocking or rolling from side to side. <sighs> For those that are going to do a little more belly down core work, we're going to place the head on the hands. We're going to let the left leg go completely flat like a tire. The right heel starts to lift away. The right glute grabs on. That whole right leg peels up and away from the floor. Left leg does not press down because then that'll peel the right hip up off the floor. Left leg is just really relaxed. If you wanted to shoot your left hand overhead and leave your head on the back of your right hand or in your fist, you could then lift your left arm keeping your head completely relaxed. So right leg lifts, left arm lifts, moving across the center axis of the body. Inhale, exhale, right leg lands, left hand comes in. Those of you doing a little spinal rocking could go into a little happy baby and grab the backs of the thighs or the outside edges of the feet. If you're in a belly down position, right leg goes completely flat. We're still pulling in toward the middle line of the body. That left leg starts to rise. You want to keep those hips square on the floor. And then that right hand shoots overhead if it so pleases to. And then the right hand rises, the left leg lifts. The head stays nice and steady. I'm going to pick my head up and look out and make sure you guys are okay. Yep. If you're in a happy baby, you may want to pull the knees together and put the arms out into T position and roll into a spinal twist. 
Breathe it in. Breathe it out. That left leg slides down, right hand slides in. Big breath in and out. And then full Shalabhasana, full locust, big toes touching forehead, chin, or mouth. Come down to the mat. Hands slide down on either side of the hips. When you're ready, the head rises, lifting collarbones. Fingertips rise up and away and pressing back toward the heels. And then the toes and legs and knees rise. If you want to clasp the hands behind the back and go palm to palm over the sacrum, you're welcome to. And then we just hold here. If you're in a spinal twist and you haven't done the other side, do the other side. <sighs> Two more breaths. Legs land, hands come back up under the forehead, upper body relaxes. If you're in a spinal twist, bring those knees up and in and hug the thighs into the chest. And then all of us are going to roll on to our left side, head in the hand. Bring the knees up in front of the hips like you're a little, little wee babe that's about to have a little nap. Right hand plants in front of the heart. That right leg lifts, knee points up toward the ceiling. Breathe it in and breathe it out. Roll that leg back down and then lift it one more time. Big breath. And roll it down. This time the leg comes up. That right hand comes up if it's safe. Those of you that want to extend that right leg and grab the leg, the foot, or the toe, or however you want to, fine. Those that don't want to, you could always grab the top of that knee or the back of the thigh and just hold. But the goal is to feel the side body, feel the core. Inhale. Exhale. Last breath here. <sighs> Releasing knee, foot, or toe. Right hand plants the leg, slides down and in. Big breath. <sighs> Either through the back or across the belly, off to the right side. Oh, head and hand. Knees come up in front. I'm going to go this way so that we have a little bit of an angle so people can see. I'm just all curled up in my little ball. Left hand is out front. And we've got three lifts. Left leg lifts. Working on adducting and abducting muscles. It closes. It lifts. And we close. Last time we lift. And then we straighten, reaching. If you want to reach, you got a full side stretch. You could stretch that bottom leg out if you wanted to or not. Otherwise, hold the back of the thigh or hold the knee. I saw somebody popped a comment up on there. I will run over and read it here in a second. Inhaling and exhaling. Blue angels will fly over or graduation if anyone else was distracted. Oh, I haven't heard the blue angels yet today. Breathe in, breathe out, release, fold down and in. Roll on to your back. Ah, you want to sit up. You could sit up. Ah, so rolling onto the back, hug the knees into the chest for a moment. You've got one bridge posture and one wheel posture if you want, or two bridge postures. You can also stuff a pillow or a block or a blanket up under that sacrum when you're ready so that you can do a supported bridge. <laughs> there goes everybody, pew, out to watch the blue angels fly by. <laughs> I love them. They, I just get so excited when they're in town.
Breathe it in. Breathe it out. All right, feet plant right behind the sits bones. Hands on either side of the hips. Yep, if you wanna do a, um, yeah, there you go. Barbara's got her ball out, that's pretty awesome. Da -da -da -da. Yep, hips lift when you're ready. Feet really plant down. Now pull to the center line. Pull in so that you're not flying away. Loosen the jaw, but yet the chest presses into the bottom of the jaw. Press through the back of the head to elongate that cervical spine. Find lots of breath here. And with the next breath out, the hips roll down and kiss the earth. If the knees need to shift from side to side, they do. And then if you want to do a full wheel, you would set up for that. Hands on either side of the ears, feet pressed down, pelvis rises. I've started doing those since India. I'm not scared of them anymore. I'm just not going to do one at this moment. If you want to do another bridge, feet plant. Hips are firm on the ground at first, hands on either side of the hips. Then we start the rise. Breathe so that you don't lose that middle line. You don't lose the soul space. Creating a giant energetic ball. If you're in a wheel, then you're bent over the ball. Find all the breath. Next time you exhale, body lands, hips land. Windshield wiper the knees, the feet can stay on the floor or they can come up off the ground and the arms can go into T position. <sighs> Beautiful. And then when you're ready, make your way into your happy yoga nap time position or a seated meditative position. Stretch the last things that need stretching. If you need a little, little inner thigh or you need a little shoulder, you need to roll down, do a little cat and cow. <sighs> Start thinking about rest. I know many of you and rest is not our forte. <laughs> we're doers, we're goers. We're functioners. We make things function. <laughs> We're leaders. And when leaders don't rest, things get a little wonky. So as you settle in and the eyes blink closed, take yourself into the points of the jaw, release Take your thoughts into your eyes, right into those ocular muscles, and ask those muscles to release. The space between the shoulder blades, release. The tip of the tailbone, release. the crease at the wrist, the palm of the hand. Release. Good. 
There are times when the spiritual path requires separation from a collective and the consciousness it holds. We may feel an internal disconnection from society during such phases as we sift through the societal conditioning. Casting aside that which does not strike us as truth and seeking alternative views. As we distill our consciousness, we discover a new way to be. Then, when it is time, we naturally seek to live and share this internal truth with others. We reach out to our tribe or discover new tribes. Integrating into the social fold with our precious offering of rarefied awareness. We realize that conflict with social values serves a purpose. It helps us clarify our own consciousness. So we, growing sp stronger spiritually, psychologically, and emotionally can thrive. Our offering to our communities can then become numinous alchemical wisdom. A person in alignment with their soul becomes a conduit for the intelligence of life itself. Their personal journey has a transpersonal effect. Let these next words pull in around you like a hug. And though all of us here being the beautiful conduits of energy and love that we are, pull it in and then project it out, possibly even repeating the words as we go. May all beings know peace. May all beings know divine love. May all beings know merciful protection. May each one of us know true belonging. May each one of us fulfill our sacred purpose with open hearts and willing minds.
so be it. You can stay where you are or slowly shift to a seat, taking your time. The Sanskrit word that I've grown to love most and best is the term swaha. Swaha simply means, and so it is. When something comes up and there's nothing that you can do about it, I they just swaha. My hand now goes out, swaha. Something that you want to do, but you don't have the energy to do, and swaha. And so it is. May you know peace and love. Swaha. Three breaths to close our practice. Belly, ribs, and collarbones. On the breath in, before we sigh, pull into center. Fold in to that sacred space, that divine place within you. And on the next sigh out, unfold, hands open, making space for others. And then each breath that we release from here, each om or shalom, let it be an offering, an opening, and an invitation. Breathe into the belly. Ooh. Breathe into the ribs. Ooh. Breathe into the collarbones. Dissolving the I into we. Swaha and Namaste. I love you all.